I'm a tech editor at work, so I'm not、uh, an artist at work or anything. I work with graphics designers, and they had a project. A lot of people had all of these unique, different ideas. They were like, "Well, at the end of the year, I'm going to have a calendar." So I was like, "Well, what can I do?" And I started doing. The creatures of Quento, the Filipino mythology creatures. My coworkers were like, "These stories are so weird, but tell me more." It's kind of interesting how my partner Alex and I started working on creatures of Quento. He's always seen me work on other projects. I guess I always call it my first love, sewing. So I have. Done like Filipiniana stuff. I've made some stuff that I guess a couple of content creators have seen. So that was kind of like my first dip into people kind of seeing who I am. So I don't know if you know who Monica Joel Ortiz is. She's on TikTok. She's got a lot of followers there, and she's on Instagram. And she's always talking about. How we need to see more Southeast Asian creators. I want to say like mid COVID 2021,、mm-hmm. she was looking for someone to make her a Filipiniana. I made her something. It was like a three piece, I believe, and it was like I made it from a barong, like an overlay from a barong, and then I made her like a top that was made out of inabel, and then I made her a skirt that kind of looked like the malong. Yeah. And I got a lot of people reaching out to me, and they were like, "Can you make me something?" Especially if you're a perfectionist, you start wondering, "Is this good enough? Am I charging enough? Do people actually like this?" And I kind of leaned into my partner, who was like, "You've always done stuff like this. You're always trying to do more." Especially in the past five years or so, I've been deep diving into what Filipino culture is. Yeah. My grandfather passed away, and that's when I was like, I don't have anyone else. Like the oldest person in my family that could tell me, "Hey, you know, here are my、yeah. stories." He's gone. I asked my mom, and of course, she has some. She's also she grew up there. We came here when I was four. My mom and my grandma were really the ones that took care of me, and he would sit on the couch or he would be in the garden for the longest time. It was just like, "Oh, hey, grandpa," and that was. The end of our spoken relationship,、yeah. but I joined the military when I turned eighteen. My grandfather was a World War II vet, just kind of like, hey, he doesn't talk about that time, but it did bring him closer. And then after the military, for whatever reason, I just got into the planting. I got into gardening, and he was like, oh, let's go in the garden, and I'll show you the proper way. I wasn't close to him, and then I started getting close to him by the end of his life. But after his Death. It was like I need to know every anything and everything about where he's from,、wow. our family, and the first thing I got into related to sewing is like the hats, <laughs> the、yeah. salakots. I like sharing what the culture is, so I was just like, what of this part do I actually like doing? Creatures of Quento didn't start because of all of this, but it like kind of went in a circle for me and for my partner. Growing up, we love mythology.、Mm-hmm. Of course, we heard like Greek and Roman mythology. That's that's what they teach you in school. This was you know Tumblr days, and there's only like two people talking about it, so、yeah. not a lot of information. So it's just kind of like asking my aunts and. Uncles and my cousin who moved here a little later than me, like, hey, what do you know about this? And it's just like a little bit of info here, a little bit of info there. Me and my partner were talking, and he was like, well, I like these stories that you talk about, and I like trying to draw them out. Maybe we can do something about this. We talked about that for probably two or three years, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Like, we don't know enough info. Let's buy some books. Do we have to be experts in this? And my partner was like, "Dude, this is it. This is this is obviously a passion project for us. Your drawings are awesome. Let's make it like cute plushies." And I was like, "Plushies? Do artists do that? Am I an artist now? Like, what happened?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was like. Well, 
yes, you're an artist. A person that creates anything from nothing yep. is an artist. Yes. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, are are these good enough? You know, are these drawings enough? And he was like, absolutely. What are you talking about? Stop, yeah. stop doubting yourself. He wanted to do the plushies. He said that plushies kind of make it feel like a real thing. You're telling the stories and people are like, I can't really imagine it. And you give them an image and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it kind of fades away unless you're surrounded by it. Like how I said earlier, when my grandfather passed away, it was like, I don't have it anymore. It feels like it just kind of disappears when you're not surrounded by it all the time. So it was kind of a way to make it feel like a real tangible thing instead of something that won't disappear just because you no longer have someone telling you a story. Just like your plushies and, and these mythology <laughs> stories, like there's nothing typical or normal about it at all. <laughs> It's like, it's like everything came from a different place than you expected, right? It's like you see yeah. a dog and you're like, oh, it's so cute. And then you learn the story of it and you're like, wait, what? It has how many eyes? <laughs> those are eyeballs. Like, I didn't actually know what they were when I first saw the dog. I was like, what are those things? And then I saw your description on social and I was like, oh, those are eyeballs. Oh my gosh. Not until you go into the Filipino folklore and the stories, you're like, the eyes are very representative, depending on the region, of either like your ancestors being close to your ancestors. Isn't the purpose of the Daligmata to search for souls? From how I understand it, this is Visayan, your soul can get detached and lost from your body. I've had my coworkers, they're not into the folklore as much as I am. Uh -huh. And they're just like, so what does that mean? Is that like a coma? And I'm like, it could be, but you know, our ancestors didn't have a word for that. They were just like, there's something wrong. He's sick or she's sick and we need to do something to bring them back to us. And so that's what Daligmata helps with is there's a spirit medium. They have a good, good in ritual. This ritual will kind of help them use the deligmata as a guide to find the soul and bring it back. I tried to deep dive into more about the deligmata, but that's the, the most I can find so far. I did find like a one-liner in a book that said that in the Visayan region, the Visayan people believe that deligmata is also a plant or an herb that one can take to also see all these souls. My family is not Visayan, we're Ilocano. So I was like, do I have any friends from the Visayas like, or that speak it? Do they know what this means? One of my friends asked her mom and she said, my mom just told me that that's deep Visayan. And I'm like, what does that mean? And she said, oh, so it's all regional, but we tack on all the regions into one big clump. That's not how it is, of course. And so she was like, that's from Southern Visayan. I don't know what that means. And so I'm just like on the search, like someone tell me, do they know what this herb is? Obviously we all have a different name for different things. So what is it? This plant that you told me about doesn't surprise me at all. And I'm actually so curious because ayahuasca is this plant medicine from Peru that like people take to be able to like heal and see things. And so I was like, well, if there's this plant medicine that's made by shaman and healers in South America, there has to be something in the Philippines because of how connected we are to the mm -hmm. earth. Like you and your grandfather gardening is not surprising at all. We are still inherently so connected to the earth. So I was like, there has to be some sort of like plant that like gets you to see things and connects you to like the other worlds. And, you know, so for you to share that with me, I'm like, of course. And like you said, you know, there's all of these different versions of this, you know, figure, but then also it could be a plant and in all of the different iterations of the same thing, but different versions of it, depending on the people and the tribe and where they were located and how it evolved based off of where they were located. It's all there.